this whole area at one time would have just been all beautiful sandy beach at low tide. It's a 120 year lease and it will bring stable funding to the Squamish nation. This um, development is going to help our, like my grandchildren and great unborn descendants because of the, how long the lease is. When complete, Sinoc will transform the Kitsilano skyline with 6,000 rental units and 1,200 condos, with one of the proposed 11 towers standing 58 stories tall. The cost is in the millions, but critics including neighbours say the cost is immeasurable and raise concerns they weren't consulted. On their side, Gordon Price, a city planner and former six-term Vancouver councillor, I spoke with him in April. He says he's not opposed to the Sinoc development, but argues concrete skyscrapers and urban density are at odds with his notion of indigeneity. You cannot say that our connection to the land is so deeply meaningful that we call ourselves land defenders. When you're building 30, 40 high rises out of concrete, <laughs> there's, there's a big gap between that and an indigenous way of building. Price also takes issue with the fact that city rules for building height and complex density don't apply since the development is on Squamish Nation Reserve land, not city land. But his complaints go deeper. During the taping of our Land Back podcast, Price also said he believes the nation is taking some kind of retribution over this stolen land. They'll be making decisions that are going to profoundly affect the development in the future of Vancouver. It's so interesting listening to you because it's reminding me of when the settlers came here and instituted their governing structures that we weren't allowed to participate That's in. That's right. And That's right. Exactly about, like that. So how does that make you feel? It's like the tables are being turned a yeah, little bit. Yeah, no, it's, look, I'll say it. It's basically, you us, now we you. That's no basis for reconciliation. That's not going to work. But That's is it really awful. we you, though, when they're supplying yeah, housing? Them. Thousands of people? While stark and shocking to some, Squamish Nation members like Sequalia have heard Price's comments before. A lot of the people who are angry and, you know, saying that they don't want to see our development occur don't know the history and they need to be educated and know that and isn't just benefiting um, Squamish Nation but providing housing for some of our people as well as non-native people who live in Vancouver area. Ottawa is responsible for reserve lands, including Sinoc. In nation-to-nation -nation negotiations, the Squamish are in talks with the federal government, not the city of Vancouver. A lot of the, the fear and the fear-mongering is um, through lack of, of awareness uh, and ignorance of the underlying issues. And once that understanding is, is made, you usually find um, really, really close allies. Imagine the frustration of having no input over the land. It's an irony that's not lost on the descendants of Sinoc, lands that once held a different kind of wealth. All lots of resources that helped us survive, clams, mussels, fish that don't go up the Squamish River, seals, different foods and that they were able to preserve and live throughout the winter with. So what changed and how did we get here? Well, by the 1800s, settlers began chipping away at the territory, eventually boxing residents of Sanok into a parcel of land called Kitsilano Indian Reserve, number six. It got whittled down over time. A bridge eventually cut through it. Also, Vancouver was growing. They felt that it was an eyesore to have an Indian reserve right in the middle of the city. So an illegal surrender and land deal was made with the Indian agent. In 1913, Sequalia's grandfather and other Skolholtmish people came home from fishing season to find an empty village burned to the ground. Jepremia Siam is also a descendant of Sinoc and a hereditary chief. What we're looking at, there's a barge across the water and I feel really emotional when I see that, um, knowing that my ancestors, you know, were loaded up to, on a barge and um, sent over to actually where I live now, Kamalchistan, which is now called Kepilano Reserve. 
So it, it is quite emotional to look at. That removal happened because of an amendment in the Indian Act that made it legal to remove Indigenous people from reserves in an incorporated town or city without their consent. But in the 1970s, the Squamish Nation sued the federal government for that removal and won. Finally, in 2002, it struck a $92 million deal that resulted in the return of a prime slice of land right here on the shores of False Creek. And we were awarded what was called the CNY lands because of the way the land is shaped around the Burrard Street Bridge. And the footings of the Burrard Street Bridge were actually a graveyard. We were taken off the land, but it's, we still own this place. Our hearts are still here. Our ancestors' hearts are still here. And nobody could ever take that away. Construction here at Sanok is well underway. And whether the neighbours agree or not, change is coming to this land. Angela Sterrett, CBC News, Sanok, Skohotmish Territory.